Welcome everyone to Conversations with Stuart. My name is Moisés Nascimento, and I'm here with Stuart Blackburn, Shaman of Pleasure. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you, Moisés. So, Stuart, uh, we've been talking a lot about pleasure. You know, what is pleasure, what is the nature of it, what are the skills of pleasure, and why it's important pleasure in our life. So, what is the opposite of pleasure? Is it pain? No, um, because you can transform pain into pleasure. Uh, pain really is intensity plus fear. And so if you wanted to take um, pain to pleasure, you recognize that uh, you've got this intensity, call it intensity, allow yourself to feel the intensity, but to relax the fear. That will change the nature of pain. Mm -hmm. And then from there, should you decide to, you can take it into to pleasure. That takes some effort and, and some skills, but it is possible. Now, the um, fear is really much more uh, an opposite of pleasure. Uh, fear doesn't allow for pleasure. Fear is about the future. Pleasure is about the present. So they are in different realms. But if you switch from being focused on the future from being focused on the present, then you can feel all of these experiences of fear, and um, they can be they can be very tricky. They can be difficult to deal with, mm -hmm. but it really is fear that that um, at least functionally is the opposite of pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, and so, how do you deal with fear? I mean, how do you deal with fear every day? Um, there are situations in life that will be you present fear, and there are also ways to live life based on fear. So how do we deal with it? Well, it's your choice. I don't want to tell anybody how to live their life. Mm -hmm. But recognizing that fear um, is not necessary, does not help you, uh, is a start. Because you, you look at the situations that are coming up, you're imagining that something that you don't want is going to happen. Fine. One, that helps reinforce the possibility of that happening. And two, uh, it's no fun. There's no need of it. So yes, there are lots of things to be concerned about and um, things to be done to help uh, bring your life into the place that you want. And that's, that's wisdom. That's utilizing your ability to recognize that certain um, choices will lead to certain circumstances that are not to your liking. Mm -hmm. Fine. But fear itself is this uh, thing that grips you and keeps you oh, out of feeling good, any possibility of feeling good. What is, what is it all about? I mean, why do we have fear? What is it that we're afraid of? Um, most of us, when we keep asking the question, well, why am I feeling this way? What is it that I'm afraid of? What is it that I'm afraid of? What is it that I'm afraid of? We keep on going deeper and deeper into ourselves. Generally, we get to a place where we're afraid of not being loved. Okay? Um, and going even deeper than that, what happens if we don't get loved? Well, then we will feel bad about ourselves. And that's awful. And quite naturally, we do not want to go there. But we don't have to go there. Once we get down to the place and say, okay, what is my greatest fear? Which is a wonderful exercise. It really is worth doing. Because if you're feeling fear and you keep saying, okay, what's behind this? What's below this? What's below this? You get to this place where I don't, I'm afraid of not feeling good about myself. And then you can recognize that you can't go any deeper than that. You know, or, or that might for you be the same as not being loved. But you can't not be loved, because love is all we are. And um, not feeling good about yourself is your choice. You can feel good about yourself if you want to. Mm -hmm. In fact, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so it's all within your power to get out of that fear. Once you recognize, you know, that's where you're going. Mm -hmm. Most of us are afraid of our fears, mm -hmm. and that keeps us from looking at them. But you look at your fears, and you can, um, 
you can get past them. Another way to do it, if you don't have the time to, to go there, is to simply say, all right, fear, I see you. You sit over there. I'll come back and talk to you later. Right now, I need to, to do this. I'm going to go off and do this. So it is a, a, a willful choice to let fear not dominate you. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, one of the, the great yogi uh, kinds of things, to not let your emotions take control of you, to control your emotions, mostly about fear. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to not, be, not let it affect you. Doesn't mean that you get rid of it entirely, but it's, it's excuse me, you don't let it dominate you. Your choice. So, so let me ask you a practical question that I'm pretty sure that a lot of people that will be watching this video is going to be thinking about. Um, and, you know, you, you, you be around society, you, know, you be around families, and a lot of times you speak to a lot of people that are not content with their lives or with mm -hmm. their jobs or with their careers or and so forth. But uh, when you start talking to these people, and myself included in the past, it's just like there is that fear of how can I provide for my family, how can I provide for my, my basic needs, for my, for my entire um, uh, dependence, right? And that's, uh, I, I would say that it would come from security, and, and how does it relate back in terms of how do you deal with that fear that holds people into a space, like a job that they don't okay. like or anything like that, because they are based on that ability to supply the basic needs to they to All family. right. The, the notion that you need to do certain things to make money to feed your family and all of that is, is certainly an important one and um, something that we all have to consider. That does not have to have anything to do with fear. And in fact, the fear makes it much harder to make that work. So if you can separate the, the concern, or at least the idea, OK, I have to go to work, or I have to find a job, or um, it's difficult for me to find a job right now, uh, and I am afraid that I won't be able to feed my family. Fine. By getting into a place of fear and allowing that to take control, then you have shut down your ability uh, to be creative and to let the, the energies flow. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's important to say, okay, I'm not going to let fear be a part of my life here, or at least to control me. I recognize I have this fear. I put it aside. I put my doubts aside. I say, okay, I believe that if I do this, it will work. It's the only real sensible choice you have. You follow what feels right, what feels good to you, and say, okay, let me go see if I can make this work. Knowing that you may need to, to adjust as you would driving a car. You always are adjusting. And so each and every day you adjust um, what you're doing. But you don't, you don't get into a car and say, oh, God, I'm afraid of, of getting into an accident. If you do, then you're going to get into an accident. Yes. So you have to say, okay, maybe I'll get into an accident, and if I do, I'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm going to drive and do the very best job I can to drive safely and to go where I need to go. Mm -hmm. So how do you get rid of fear? You don't necessarily get rid of fear. But what you can do is say, uh, it is not something that I'm going to let run my life. Ultimately, fears come back, as I've been saying. But back to about how you feel about yourself. The more you know yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you feel good about yourself, the less fear you have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the, the great delights of the meditative path and um, how people become more and more fearless. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's in that place. Yeah. So right now, the thing to do is to say, okay, I see you fear, but I'm not going to let you control me. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in the in the in the first talk time we talked about uh, choosing from pleasure, not from fear. It's one of the principles of the, the skills of pleasure. Right, right. right. And um, that that choice, right. Uh, so what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that if you are able to face your fears, mm -hmm. right, and not be afraid of your fears, right, to be able to face it, 
and separate in your life, mm -hmm. right? And then start choosing from pleasure. Right. So it's a way that you're going to reduce that visual cycle and staying tight into a very good yes, place. That's right. Yeah. The um, <sighs> there are lots of people um, who are facing difficult choices right now, and to say that um, they need to or that it's useful to choose from pleasure when you haven't got a job and you haven't got any money and all of that. Y it's still important to say, okay, I am choosing on the basis of what I can do given my current circumstances to make my family um, as happy as possible. And so I'm going to go look for um, the ways that I can use what little money I have to buy the food as opposed to getting into this place of fear and spending all of your personal energy on being afraid that you won't be able to feed your family. You can always do something. There are always choices to be made. And fear gives you just those perspectives that are about alleviating the fear. Whereas the pleasure, coming from a place of pleasure, you have this sense of, okay, what can I do right now to increase the pleasure of my life? My options may be not as, as great as I would like, but I still have options. Mm -hmm. Because it would be important to develop a, an assurance uh, that things will be okay. Well so you can also detach yourself from it. And, and the, the reason I'm saying is I, I was raised in a very Catholic environment mm -hmm. where people got desperate over the circumstances and suddenly that desperation transforms into oh God will solve it oh let's put in the hands of God things are going to be okay and when that happens you can perceive that relaxation that acceptance of that situation which often you know not uncommonly will lead into a, a good resolution and time will pass and everything is going to be back to normal right right so you, you're talking about hope and leading to um, optimism, leading to confident expectation. Mm -hmm. So these are all ways of raising that vibrational energy to use that model. It's not the only model, but it, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring up your, your vibration. That is to say, you want to bring up your feeling good, your level of, of joy. And that that higher level of vibration, that higher joy, is very powerful because that's what is going to um, to attract what you want, or becomes the template for what you want. There, there are other ways of looking at it, but that's enough. It's it's the way that you can um, can make your life better right now by just being in the place where it is um, where you're welcoming that that betterment, that the more joy. And when you're feeling down and depressed and, and all of that, which is, which is no fun, um, what you're doing is welcoming in more misery. And I'm not trying to blame anybody for being in that place. And I'm not trying to blame the victim. But victimhood is about saying somebody else is responsible for how I am feeling. When we take responsibility for how we're feeling and let go of any kind of, of blame and victimhood, then we grab our power. We claim our power and say, okay, I have choices here. But when we're victims, when we're blaming somebody else, we're powerless. And, um, and therefore, we have just cut off our own um, ability to get things done and bring our lives into alignment with who we, we really are. So quite often, um, people that are close to you, people that you love, will feel fear, and that will influence you or affect you. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? It's a it's a hard situation many times because um, we tend to resonate with other people's feelings, and we resonate with the strongest feeling around. So we, uh, if somebody else is very deeply in fear and has a, a strong vibration, um, 
there's not much that we're going to be able to say that's going to affect them. We have to model it for them. We have to stay in our own vibration of joy. And they're not going to like that. Uh, misery loves company. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and that's, that's a very true thing. Mm-hmm. Miserable people want you to feel miserable with them. So it is very important that you stay in a place of joy. You have to turn your focus to uh, what makes you happy. Keep your, your focus on your own joy even while they are in their fear or anger or whatever else it is to stay centered and to feel good now one of the things that's going to happen is um, is likely to happen is that they will criticize you and try to get you to criticize yourself and most of us are pretty adept at criticizing ourselves the notion is that if you are criticized or you criticize yourself, then you will be better able to change your life to their liking or to your liking. Most criticism is by other people is that they want you to, uh, to do what they want you to do. Um, but then it's time to look at how effective criticism is. Is their criticism, is that, is that effective in making you motivated to do what they want? Sometimes, but generally not much. And your own personal criticisms, uh, does that motivate you to do things differently to make you a happier person? Not much. Criticism is not very effective. So one of the things that, that people need to remember is if they are af- genuinely after being happy, the criticism doesn't get them there. It is not effective in making you feel better. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't it, um, help other people feel better. So criticizing them doesn't improve things. It does not add to the joy of the world. Mm-hmm. It, it just is not effective. Mm-hmm. And so um, by paying attention to that and saying, okay, instead of criticizing here, I'm going to hold this place of joy, or just beauty, or awe, or anything. Uh, Just hold this high vibration here, and let that be the dominant energy, and let other people resonate with me on that. You look at all the holy people. You know, they will say things and, and make people feel good, but the main thing is to be in that energy, that vibration of bliss. And, and that is what is most powerful. Mm-hmm. So it, it means also that criticism then relates back straight and, and foremost with, with health. Thank you. Yes, it, um, because if we are criticizing ourselves um, or uh, letting other people criticize us, then we are tensing up. We always tense up. And, and that's contrary to health. So if somebody is criticizing you, for instance, the fastest thing to do, the healthiest thing to do, is to change that within you as quickly as you can. So somebody may say, um, Moises, um, your beard looks really funny. Your job then would be to immediately um, think of something that's really good about you. But my teeth are great. (laughs) Whatever it is, yes. you, you quickly get into a compliment as fast as you can uh, be, and then hang out in that space. That's what's healthy here. 